All right, hello everyone, and welcome to session 11 of Star Trek Mata Hari. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar, uh, Mata Hari is a tabletop role playing game, or an actual play as the kids call it, of the Star Trek Adventures rule set. Uh, we are set in the year currently uh, 2412 aboard an Eclipse class in the Shackleton Expanse. Uh, what that means is that we are in the same quote unquote shared canon as my Fenrir, Groundskeepers, and October games. You don't really need to have watched any of those to enjoy this episode or this uh, series, quote-unquote, but you're going to catch some nods and references if you do. You can find the VODs for all my games on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, let's see, announcement-wise, announcements-wise, do I have anything? No, I don't actually have any announcements this week, so let's just actually just go around and have uh, everyone introduce themselves, starting with the captain. Well, the first announcement is that ELH is the man. Yay! ELH is awesome. Yeah, what? <laughs> Woo! I don't know. I just I feel like you always have announcements. But anyway, my name is Charles, uh, also known as Dare Wolf. I'm playing Captain O'Connor. Nice to meet everybody. Also, it's yeah. become tradition. Hi, Shiro Luffy. Everybody, say hi to Shiro Luffy. Hi, Shiro Luffy. Hi, Shiro, Shiro Luffy. 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 Hi. What's up? There we go. They uh, he, she, they. I honestly don't know. They are a staple of all VTuber streams. They show up and bring good, good stream vibes. So we say hi every time they show up. Nice. Thanks. Well, thank you, person. Also, I uh, didn't mean to interrupt, but uh, Jaro, you're up next. Yep. Hey everyone, my name is Nikhil, um, and I play First Officer Commander Jaro. All right, Mr. Leob. I'm AKA Xavier Galaxy, real name Xavier, and I play Ensign. Uh, Leob on the Matahari. Excellent. Mr. Prawl. Everyone, my name is Alex. I play Lieutenant Commander Prawl, the Matahari's intelligence officer. And certainly last but not least, Mr. Taleb. Hello, I am Brian. I, my name is Brian on Twitter and on Twitch. And I play uh, no, Commander Jammer Taleb, uh, the Rigelian chief engineer and second officer of the Matahari. Very nice. And of course, if you don't know me already, I'm ELH, the Game Master. And with that, let's go ahead and uh, run our introduction. Welcome back. So something I like doing for all my Star Trek streams in particular is have the players do an opening monologue. Uh, Mr. Jaro, if you would be so kind to read us your log. Sure thing. First officer's log, starting 90815.4. Another day on the Matahari brings yet another paradigm-altering scientific discovery. We are currently stationed in the vicinity of the Pinnacon Belt, one of the densest asteroid fields ever discovered. According to Starfleet Command, autonomous probes have discovered that the asteroid debris resonates with nearly infinite quantum signatures at a subatomic level. According to our science staff, this presumably means that these rocks actually originate from many different quantum realities beyond our own. Personally, I'm getting a little tired of other dimensions and alternate realities. Uh, the priests back home are always saying that it is the unknown that defines our existence. And usually I'm fine with that, but frankly, I could use a little less unknown in my life right now. It's also clear to me that Starfleet Command is holding information from us. They've sent us on a series of missions to investigate quantum anomalies, but they won't give us any guidance on their overall strategy or the threat that they're working against. 
And yes, I'm aware that you spooks in Starfleet intelligence are listening in on these logs. If you're going to install your own computer core to spy on me, then you also get to hear me complain about you. Uh, seems only fair to me. Anyway, uh, the mission. The Pentagon belt is too dense for the matter for you to approach for closer study. And Starfleet Command is, of course, insisting that we collect physical samples of the asteroids. I'm taking a small shuttlecraft with a science team to get close enough to hopefully get what we need for them. Our away missions have consistently resulted in unplanned for violence, and I'm hoping that a science mission will be a nice change of pace. But I'm remaining vigilant for any unexpected threats. I think that Ensign Leo might still be a little rattled after being launched into the depths of space by those tentacled horrors we encountered. So I'll plan on watching his back this time around. I'm afraid he's going to have to learn that when the Matahari goes on a mission, the only thing that's certain is that something is going to go wrong. All righty. You may have uh, two momentum for that lovely opening log. So we uh, we start today's session with uh, the Matahari sort of approaching this almost wall of rock. Um, the asteroid belt is uh, located in the Pentagon system. Uh, it's actually not really a system so much as it is just a sun and the asteroid belt. Um, but this asteroid belt, as was said in the opening log, um, it is so dense that you have to almost stop the Matahari a good distance away, like almost a full AU away, because of how dense the rocks are. And even as you sort of see the Matahari floating there, um, you see the rocks sort of banging off of each other, scattering, breaking into pieces. And as that's all happening, a runabout uh, drops out of the Matahari and begins approaching uh, this turbulent space. So, uh, obviously, Jaro, you are on the away team leading it. Uh, I do want to confirm, though, who else is on your away team to start with? Um, I think that Raven, is, we brought along the pilot. Uh -huh. um, I think that Danny Bradish should be along. Okay. Um, and I think that uh, Enzin Leob is, is a must as our science guy. And then... Um, Prowl into layup. I think it's it's up to you if you want to come along or maybe bring one of your um, your um, supporting character supporting characters. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think? Prowl into layup. Are you guys coming as yourselves or coming as a supporting? I'll come uh, with prowl. Yeah, I'll bring to layup. Okay. Cool. So, uh, as you guys get closer and closer to the asteroid field. Um, Ensign Raven's hands sort of dance even more rapidly across the uh, the terminal in front of her. And she doesn't quite sweat. You've never seen Raven really nervous. Like, she's flown the Matahari in combat, but this is probably the close to anxious you've ever seen her. To the point where you might want to actually ask if she's all right, because it really looks like she's having to do quite a lot of work. Ensign, oh... Ends in Raven, uh, you, you got this? Uh, sir, I could fly you through the worst plasma storm out there. I could fly you through the middle of the Badlands. Uh, let's just say I was hoping to do this on the Matahari, not this outdated runabout. I understand. Is there anything we can do to help? Uh, well, you could get out and start phasering the rocks that are about to bounce off our shield grid. I'm only half joking, by the way. Um, I'll, uh, I'll turn to Tulayup. Commander Tulayup, is there anything we could do to, um, to uh, better proof ourselves against the, uh, rocks that are coming in? You've transferred as much of the power as I'm comfortable transferring to the deflector shields, but I have also kept the shield envelope as close to the ship as possible. As the more uh, reverberations we cause in the asteroid field, the worse I think it will be. I'm not sure that there is a lot we can do to avoid causing at least some disturbance, but 
Uh, I have great faith in Ensign Raven that she will keep us safe. Hear that, um, Ensign Raven? We have faith in you. Uh, but let us know if uh, there's anything more we can do. And uh, Raven sort of nods at that and continues on her work. And again, we sort of see the runabout approaching this wall of turbulent rock. And as I said before, you're seeing asteroids of varying sizes. Some are larger than even the Matahari. Some are pretty much like soccer ball sized. Um, they are drifting within almost touching or, you know, caressing distance of each other. And I, I use the word caress there very lightly because it is one of those things where if a rock doesn't necessarily like hit another and go repelling, it almost like begins to congeal and form into an even bigger rock. You know, standard dense asteroid stuff. Um, but in order to enter this field, I am going to need Ensign Raven to roll something. Um, so if someone could get Ensign Raven's sheet, um, she is going to be rolling a control and a con at a difficulty of two. And this does count as an activation, so you could give her a talent, a focus, or a value. Uh, the other thing that will help Raven out is that the shuttlecraft will assist with an engines con. Which, if I remember a runabout correctly, I need someone to roll a d20 under an 8. Alright, uh, I'll roll for Raven then. Um, I'll roll for the ship. Nope. nope, Captain B2, the ship, unfortunately. So, no help from the shuttle. So, so what is Raven rolling again? A control and a con. Cool. And I think we'll do it with a focus. Okay. Control, con... Hey, there's the two successes you need. So almost like pushing through a mesh net is the best way I can think to describe this. The Matahari's runabout begins to push into the asteroid field. And to lay up some modifications to the shield grid, sort of create this almost collapsing pocket behind you as you push through this dense rock. And every once in a while, there's a lurch as Raven sort of, not at the last moment, but has to very suddenly, like, lurch the shuttle to the side and otherwise dip and dive. Uh, as you I, all... uh, Oh, go ahead. I, I, I sort of stumble to, uh, to Ensign Raven's chair and, and prop myself up behind it with this, like, intense look of worry on my face. And So, Ensign Raven, how long have you been flying runabouts for? Runabouts? Probably longer than you were in the Academy. Uh, starships... <laughs> Uh, a little bit shorter than that. Okay, how long have you been flying runabouts through extremely dense asteroid fields? Are you trying to say something about my piloting skills? I just want to make sure that... <sighs> Look, last time was supposed to be a standard investigatory away mission. This time, I want it to be a standard investigatory away mission. Ensign Layab, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Um... Last time, weren't you complaining that you were uh, bored on the ship? Uh, oh, I'm uh, I'm sorry, Commander. The uh, the the five lifetimes of memories is making it really hard for me to remember that particular moment. Um, you're you're gonna um, you're always gonna pull that card on us, aren't you? Uh, what card? I forgot. What what were we talking about? Ah, uh, jeez. And it's at this point that uh, Raven actually looks over at you, Bradish, and gives you a wink. And then she touches a button on the control, and Bradish, an alarm begins to sound at your console. Oh, God. Oh, God. The main um, Polaron burst inhibiting particle has just exploded. We're going down. <laughs> and then he starts laughing. Uh, I just stand, I stand up. I straighten up my shirt. <sighs> Uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Rad Bradish, you're my superior, so uh, I'll laugh that off. Ensign Raven, I hate you. And he just turns around and walks to the back. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and it's actually kind of funny because as soon as you start to get to the back, Raven just kind of shouts, well, are, are you going to do the scans of the asteroids from back there? You, you, oh, okay. <laughs> I, uh, I do indeed pull up the panel uh, in the back the science display there and do it and do it from the back as All they right. say. Alright, so Raven. Fist bump. <laughs> oh dear. So, uh, this is going to be a reason and a science and the difficulty on this will be a two. The shuttle will assist you again on an eight or lower. 
All right. Uh, reason and a science. And I'll take my focus in history of spatial anomalies. Sure, that would apply here. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Two successes is what you need. So as you run your scans, I am going to give you access to a handout, which you are free to disseminate in the manner of your choosing. Should be now initial belt scan. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go. All right. Uh, Commander, uh, I've done my initial scan. Would you like to hear what we have? Yep, go ahead. So at the center of the Pentagon belt, the asteroids are denser. It, it, it's almost like there's numerous quantum signatures in there, and they're all pulling these... Uh, asteroids together which is what we found on the uh, automated probes when we sent them now what's interesting is that there's a the total number of quantum signatures is fluctuating it's it's like it's not constant so it's unstable unstable and we're not going to be able to use transporters uh in the collection of these rock samples so uh Everyone should strap into their EVA suits and uh, pack a mining drill. Uh, thanks, Enzin Leo. Uh, did you, now that we're closer, can you divine any sense of what's causing this, this anomaly? Sure, I'll see if I can um, actuate the plasma gradients on these singularities. All right. So what I would say is that if that is your free question, all you're really able to tell is that the closer you get to the center of the asteroid belt, at least as far as your sensors are concerned, the more interference and the greater in number the singularities get. But that's as much of an answer I can give you at this time. All right, Commander. So basically it breaks down to closer to center of, sing of uh, anomaly, more singularities, more interference. That's all I can tell you right now. All right, I think that's the best we're going to get then. All right. Um, well, I won't make you go on this uh, spacewalk since uh, I know you've had a very uh, dramatic Commander, experience. Commander, I may have had a rough go of it last time, but I was also brought on this ship for a reason. I am something of an expert, and some say prodigy, but I don't in uh spatial anomalies if anyone should be investigating these asteroids it's probably me it's well, a, this has more spacewalk experience than we do currently <laughs> <laughs> i thought for a moment he was going to say what an expert in humility he was um that was one of my previous hosts well um i respect that ends in my ob so um i'll go you, I want you and Bradish to come with me. Um, Brawl and Dolayup, I'd appreciate it if you could watch our back from the ship. Aye, right, Commander. Uh, Commander? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, request not to be tethered to the kid. Just, he tends to get vented. We'll all be gathered to the runabout. And it's at this point, Bradish, a actual alarm sounds on your console. Ah, oh, hell. Um, very funny. Very fucking funny. Oh, no, kid. This time, this time it's real. Raven, what, what's going on? Uh, that can't be right. Are, are you seeing the same thing she's, or I'm seeing? And you, you look, and Bradish, what you're seeing is that there is a almost a doppelganger shuttle uh, a bit of a ways ahead of you in the asteroid field. By doppelganger, I mean the initial sort of sensor ping would seem to indicate that it's the very same runabout that you're in. Oh, not this shit again. Um... Bradish, if you tell me that there's copies of us involved, involved in this mission in, in, in any way, I'll I, take a I look, sir. The, sir, just let me take a look at it. Computer, um, run a scan on that ship, uh, verifying quantum regularities in, uh, between our 
vessel and that one. Sure. It's going to be another reason science difficulty of two, and the ship will again assist you with an eight or lower. Um, and I'll take a quantum mechanics focus on that. <laughs> Fair enough. Two successes. Well, I think congrats. That should be the golden eagle. <laughs> congrats. You're getting another handout. It is entitled the Tupapit <laughs> Shuttle Scan. All right, uh, Commander, this is not a straight-up copy, um, simply because this, A, shuttlecraft has nobody on board, uh, B, it has some kind of foreign quantum signature at the subatomic level, so this, this isn't from our reality. Um, and let me take a look here. It, it seems to have passed through a quantum fissure. It's it's shifting from one quantum reality to another but hey happy news uh it's not from uh, mirror universe so we'll be running into any terrans well all right that's 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 good news yeah is this is this a is this a threat to us in any way i mean there's nobody on board so unless it has a very sophisticated ai is there anyone in the asteroid field around the shuttle would you like that to be your free question? No. No, I do not. <laughs> okay. I can I can check for any other warp signatures in the field. Uh, it's going to be tricky, I'm sure, uh, with uh, the interference. But Yeah, Come what I would them. say is as you go to check for additional life signs in the area, it's just too dense and the rocks are moving too quickly for you to get an accurate read of uh, any life signs that would be on the rocks themselves Come yeah on. It, no no uh it, it is not working out commander i won't be able to get any more readings uh yes commander to lay up barring any unforeseen difficulties i recommend we use our magnetic landing gear to pair to the quantumly different shuttle perhaps dragging it out when we leave you think so i Maybe I'm just too risk averse, but I just uh, was hoping to finish our mandate and get out of here as fast as possible. Hey, Commander, can we not touch the creepy ghost ship? Just my two cents. But I think it has. So it is cool. I mean, it's cool, right? You literally make no sense, kid. One minute you're like, I don't want to die. The next minute, like, let's go touch a ghost. I don't understand it. Look, if I'm going to be head of Starfleet uh, science thing <laughs> later later on in my life i gotta make some big discoveries and that's a big discovery waiting to happen right there come on it's starfleet what are we doing here one venting per week kid that's all you get one look this is a uh, this is a voluntary venting i'm just going through an airlock that's it look i i can probably i let me take a look at least at the at the at the computer here let me take a look see if i can make up some kind of uh quantum inoculation so that we don't get phased through time you you make a strong argument why don't you go ahead and, and, and take a look at that is there something that we can do to inoculate ourselves against getting phased into I a different reality radish on this on the shoulders it's one of those things where um, you could certainly start to take steps towards securing your sort of quantum, what would you call it, Qu quantum perspective, or maybe subjective, objective, okay. whichever well words means your perception of the quantum reality. Um, you can start doing that. However, I have a very important question for Prawl and Taleop. Where are you two located in the runabout right now? Um, oh, yeah. Sitting at the engineering panel, just but just inside that first, uh, so I can see the bridge through the hatch, but I'm not actually on, or like the little command center of the runabout, but I'm not actually on it. Okay, and you prowl? Probably towards the back section of the runabout. All right. So what I'm going to say is you're both going to see the same things just a few seconds after one another. Prawl, you look out of a hatch window. And you see an empty EV suit just floating by outside. And then to lay up, you see the same thing out of your window. Um, did anybody else just see an EV suit float by? Mm. It was empty? 
uh, I think so. Or or the 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 faceplate was polarized, and I did not see any face inside. Is this coming up on your scans, Bradish? That would Is be it? a no. No, Commander. But last week was the Halloween episode. I don't like Halloween episode 2.0. I'm not enjoying this. Uh, all right. Episode. Uh, Bradish, have you thing. been to sick bay? It's just a thing he does, Commander. Uh, I ignore it. Uh, Leo, did you make any progress in proofing us from quantum displacement? I'm extra afraid that that is what, what is happening here now that we have uh, an empty EV floating around. I, I, I'm going to be able to make it. I, I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but I, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get on it, Cap, or Commander. Sorry. Uh, okay, I'm going back to my station now. In the meantime, I once again suggest that perhaps we use the magnetic hull plating to attract any uh, Starfleet technology. Uh, just adhere right. it to the hull so that we don't lose it in the maelstrom. Okay, outside. Commander, I'm sorry. You want to activate a magnetic hulled component in the middle of an asteroid field comprised mostly of metal. Ensign, are you questioning whether or not I'm able to tailor a magnetic field to only attract the technology I want? Because I feel like one of us has an expertise in a rank that indicates that that's probably possible. And the other one of us spent two minutes in space twice last week. All right. Yeah, yeah, both that of... tracks. <laughs> All right, both of you. I, I trust your judgment, Commander Jaleb. Just please keep in mind that we don't know if there's more Starfleet technology out here than we can see right now. I want to just make sure that we don't attract a whole bunch of stuff on us all at once. Well, it should certainly be just a manner of turning off the whole polarization if that ends up being the case. All right. Well, um, let's try it then. All right. So to lay up, uh, you can have one assist here. It can either be the shuttle or it can be someone else, perhaps Leob. Uh, for you, it's going to be a daring engineering uh, difficulty of three. Uh, I'll, I'll take the shuttle. Thank you. Okay. So uh, <laughs> shuttle's going to do an... Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. All right. You should probably spend a momentum too. I will spend the momentum. And I would like to use... Oh, I don't actually think I have a focus <laughs> after all my big oh, talk no. well oh, the well, shuttle the, does the assist shuttle, you shuttle got us one i think mm -hmm. hey look at that that's a total of four successes so you, you get go. a momentum right back so to lay up you sort of do a magnetic pulse where you magnetize the hull and begin drawing in materials and it's a good thing you did only a very quick pulse because as a certain ensign pointed out, uh, you not only get uh, bits of rock and asteroid around you, but several very large things hit the hull at the same time. Specifically, uh, at the front of the uh, runabout, a another EV suit slams into the front windscreen. And then Prawl, one slams into the your side window to lay up. One on your side window. And Jaro, if you were to look out to the left side of the runabout, you would see a fourth suited figure. And you know there's a figure in it because the moment uh, they sort of get their bearings, they sort of start pounding on the hull. And uh, my question is, what do you do about this? It's kind you of an see, open there question. were crewmen in distress. Uh, it's just can, left them. can we get a communication to them? You can certainly try. All right, gonna try that first. Okay, Commander, I can try to uh, see if I can break through the quantum irregularities, get into their communications net. Do it. All right. So, Leo, but why don't you give me a daring and a science uh, difficulty of two? Um, quantum mechanics apply. I definitely would apply. And I'll and, uh, get the I'll run about to assist on that. I would just like it on record that I protest. Just pull the record. 
And if you try uh, intensifying the emergency harmonic coupling, that might help you get a lock on their comm signal. That's re Yeah, yeah, you're right, probably. <laughs> okay. All right, so unfortunately, it is at this point that uh, you try to make a communication uh, set up to them, but it's not working. And it is at this point that, Prawl, you see that the one outside your window is moving to the airlock with a phaser at the ready. I am <laughs> going to lock down the airlock. Okay. Uh, why uh, don't you roll me a daring security difficulty of one? Are we concerned about these people on the hull? I mean, uh, that one has a phaser that's going towards the airlock right now. I'd rather have that one stuck to the hull than be able to move move around. Be Would uh, composure count as a focus on this? I'll give it to you, sure. All right, you get the one success. You are able to uh, hermetically seal the airlock. However, it seems you've only bought yourself a little bit of time because you see sort of that other side of cutting through where you see the phasers start to cut through the metal. So you probably have maybe a minute, maybe two minutes before they cut through the door itself. Commander, we can try reversing the polarity of the hull. And Excellent. Maybe I that was... will reject the uh, the EVAs back away from us. I was just going to suggest Four. that. Commander, as, as, a, as a secondary option, we can recalibrate the tertiary thermal displacement regulator and send an energy pulse that should stun any living creature. Why not both? Well, because then we're sending a unconscious body into the maelstrom of rocks smashing together and almost definitely killing a person. They Where... tried to break into our ship. I do not see the problem we, with this. We don't know why they're breaking in. They could be trying to survive. I agree with Commander Talaya. I think we should stun them if we can. Commander, would you like some help with that? Certainly. So what I would say is I think this would actually be a daring security. Uh, difficulty of three, and you guys can have one person who is assisting whoever is doing this role, whether that's Radish or Prawl or Teleop, however you want to flavor it. You know, I I won't be able to target these charges very well. I'll I'll, I'll just leave it to someone else. Radish can help. All right. Do you want to help or do you want to do it? Yes. All right, I will assist. I will make the necessary changes, but uh, Bradish, I'm trusting you to uh, to fire the... Uh, when you see the the, uh, the reticles line up, you press the fire button. You got it. All right. So, uh, Bradish, what I would say is this does count as an activation for you, so you can add a talent to value. Uh, you could increase one of their disciplines by one. You could increase one of their attributes by one. Um, this does count as a supporting character activation. But, uh, as said, you're going to be doing a daring security to lay up. You're going to be assisting with a daring engineering. Again, difficulty is a three. Because we're on the runabout, can I use fusion reactors as a focus? Give it to you, sure. Oh. What's the difficulty? Two? Three. Three? Can I use a momentum crew? Yep. Oh, please. Go for Go. it. Thank you very much, if you wouldn't mind, my good man. All right. And so I'll roll three down. So daring <laughs> and security... And 3d20. Uh, I do have security as a focus. You do. All right, cool. All right, so that is a grand total of uh, five successes. So you get two momentum back. And it is one of those things where uh, you all hear the hum of the fusion reactors sort of build and build and build as to lay up configures the field. And Brad, as you sort of hover over the button, and right as the reticles line up, you push it. And there's almost like an orange pulse that emanates out from the hull of the uh, runabout. And the figures immediately go limp, but still attached to the runabout. Bradish is filled with glee. Delia, <laughs> uh, Bradish, uh, we need to bring these guys now into the, into the ship. I'm on it, oh. Commander. As they are attached to the hull, could we not transport them into the rear compartment, perhaps raising a security field? I believe that transporters are uh, not effective in the, so close to the quantum anomalies, right, Leo? 
Uh, that's what I thought, sir, but I can maybe try... I mean, they're close. They're right on top of the ship. I might be able to squeak something out. If you if you can do it, that would be easiest. And I agree with raising the security field. Yeah. Understood. So, uh, uh, what is this going to be? This is going to be a control engineering... Uh, the mod or not the mod hurry, the runabout will assist you with another eight or lower. And the difficulty on this, I believe, will be a four because mm. they're not on a pad. And because of the quantum turbulence in the area, yeah, this would be a four. Can sight. I uh use a momentum on this bad boy, or did we run out? I can't remember. You've got three, we have three momentum, so we're good, yeah. Can I take two extra die, or is it not worth it? I think it's worth it. This is a very important role, I think. So if you want to take all the momentum, I think that's fair. Okay. okay. We'll assist. Uh, well, the runabout's assisting on this one, I think. Uh, what I would say is that you can either have the runabout or to layup. You can't have both. I'd rather have to layup. I'd but... rather have to layup. Yeah. All right. So to lay up, you're doing a control engineering on your side. That should be on a shirt, actually. I'd rather have to lay up. <laughs> nice. And uh, I'll take my uh, quantum mechanics again as a, as or a subspace field theory part of me as a focus on that. Okay. Afraid not useful this time. Interesting. Looks like Leo's nice. got it on his own though with four successes. So. Uh, there is the subtle hum of a transporter feed as the guests, quote-unquote, beam into the back compartment. However, at that exact same moment, there is another alarm at, at, at Ensign Ravens and Bradish's console. And nothing happens, per se, but Raven kind of looks at it and reports to Jaro, uh, Commander, you're not going to like what I just noticed on sensors. Just... Give it to me. Well, uh, it seems our use of transporters triggered some form of an instability. Uh, we're now in a entire section of this asteroid field that is a new quantum signature. Which, and she kind of looks at Leo, if I understand science correctly, means we're in an entirely different reality right now. <sighs> uh, computer... Uh, let's try to isolate the quantum signature of our surroundings at the moment. And of course the computer begins churning. Uh, Prawl, since you're in the back right now, um, after a few moments as this is all happening, the uh, suited figures begin to stir. And they sort of see you there. Uh, I'm assuming you maybe have a phaser at the ready? I have a phaser. I've put up the security containment field. Okay. So what happens is uh, one of them, a taller individual, stands up. The others sort of remain on the ground, sort of getting their bearings. But one of them stands up, uh, walks up to the security force field, and reaches up to remove their helmet. And when they do so, what you see surprises you. Because, Prawl, I have to ask your backstory. Do you have any family? Any that survive? Or I guess even if they're dead, yes. what's, what sort of family did Prawl have? Let me go back to my bio to double check it. Had two surviving siblings, a older sister and an older brother. So what happens is when the helmet comes off, you see your older sister. And what's important about her is she is Cardassian like you. But she looks like she has definitely been through the ringer. Uh, she sort of has a large bruise on her left cheek. Uh, she has a gash across the top of her forehead. And you notice that her eyes, which Amada Flavor is usually being vibrant green, are almost a dull sort of washed out color. It's kind of standing there staring. Kayana, is that you? Is that you? You're dead. You, you died. I watched you die. I hate mirror universes. Lieutenant Commander Prowl, uh, do you know this individual? This is my older sister, Commander. She should be back on Cardassia. 
Uh, listen, my name is Commander Jarrion. I represent the United Federation of Planets. Um, we come from an alternate universe than uh, the one you are from. We uh, were studying a quantum anomaly and discovered you. You may be disoriented because uh, the prowl in your universe is dead, but our prowl is thankfully alive. Right. Sorry, it's just the shock of seeing someone that's been dead for years. Um, uh, how to put this? And she kind of hems and haws for a moment. I'm sorry, I, I have to interrupt. Just I need to double check this. Do you know of something called the Terran Empire? No, no, but I do. Well, I do know of it, but it's it's a different universe than mine. Oh, thank God. Um, no. Um, it's funny you mentioned the Federation. I haven't heard that term in decades. I, I come from well, all of us, and she sh sort of motions at the other figures. Uh, we all come from a universe where the Borg have conquered most of the galaxy. Uh, we came to this belt because we thought there might be some form of technology or some form of, well, anything that we could use as a weapon against the Borg. It's This was kind of our last hope. Uh, we're, we're almost all Borg at this point. Uh, can, I, can I do any, um, can I do a roll to see if she's being honest with us? You certainly may. Uh, that's going to be an insight and a command at a difficulty of two. Uh, to lay up to answer your question, yes, the duplicate runabout is still outside the ship. Uh, would a focus and investigation say so that apply? apply yeah. I'd give it to you. Two cool. successes. That's all you really need. So, uh, you can tell that she is being honest, or at least she believes she's being honest. Um, there is definite genuine sort of surprise, genuine anxiety, uh, definite sort of trauma that you're picking up on. But whether or not you can trust her complicitly, that's your call, not mine. Sure. Um, well, Gaia, I'll, I'll give you a second to speak with Lieutenant Commander Brawl. But I will let you know that I don't know if we have anything in particular that could help you win your war, but we're willing to help where we can, or we can offer you and your compatriot uh, asylum in our universe um, if if that would be preferable to returning. That being said, uh, we appear to be, be trapped where you came from, so I'm going to have to work with my staff to get us back. Commander back Jaro, can I have a word with you? Uh, sure thing. And then I'll walk away and I'll leave you, um, you Brawl, to be able to talk to her. Does the new quantum signature match the signature we found on the the duplicate runabout? No, it's an entirely new one. Okay. That's what I was going to say. I don't think we're in there really sure. either. Yeah. All um, right. So I pull the commander aside. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm unfamiliar a little bit with like the particular mechanics of this as far as like what values, how mm -hmm. to apply a value necessarily, or if that is something that I apply, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But basically this is you can't do that. It's against regulation. So I pull him aside and commander... Look, I know I'm new here, and maybe I've ruffled a couple of feathers. I don't care. Whatever we learn from them, we're not allowed to help them in their fight against the Borg. The Prime Directive still applies to other universes. The, 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 the Prime Directive that we can't interfere with with free warp species. I mean, this is, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're us. They're an extension of us. They're not another You nation. know that there's been a d amendments to the directives that we can't help the other timelines. That's why we haven't sent fleets into the Mirror Universe to try to free every subjugated species there. 
commander? I I, I understand and I appreciate your knowledge of regulations. I believe in the past we have cut deals with with members of uh, of of people from alternate universes um, or other worlds. Uh, information sharing, things of that, things of that nature. Um, and I think that uh, given that we're the people here, that's the decision that we're going to have to make. I will fully accept any consequences that Starfleet Command puts on us. Furthermore, uh, I, I think likely we, we, uh, we won't be sending them back to their certain death but that's the choice that they're going to have to make for themselves. Understood, Commander. And I just turn around and go back to my console and keep bleep blooping. Right. So, Prawl, of course, you're, you know, asking your sister questions. She's asking questions of you. Uh, at this point, um, one of the other individuals is able to get to their feet. And uh, Mr. O'Connor... Your doppelganger is this figure. So if you would kindly regale us with your Irish accent as uh, to sort of give you a little bit of context, uh, you were sent here to find anything that would help you uh, with the Borg, no matter what it is. All right, I'm ready. No, make it back into real British. All right. Um, so I was sent here to, am I a Federation captain in this universe? Or no, you actually never joined Starfleet in this universe. Well, your universe, quote unquote. What's my relationship with his sister? Uh, she is your field team leader. Ooh, field team leader. All right. So Bradish, uh, not Bradish. Oh, I'm in Bradish's voice. Sorry. I lied. All right. There it is. Okay. Field officer. I, uh, I can have a word with you for just a moment. Um, okay. Yeah. What's... Uh, excuse me, Prawl. Um, sorry. She kind of steps aside. Uh, what is it, O'Connor? Commander, our field officer. Sorry, these fucking weirdos from the other universe. I, I know it's real tough for you to see your dead brother, but understand, he's not your brother. We came here for a mission. We've got a job. This ship's better than anything we have in our universe. We should take it, get back, and try to save the others. Hey, I'm standing right here. I can hear you. <laughs> you. And she sort of nods and says, yes, he can hear you. Maybe we don't so much take the shuttle, O'Connor, as we ask nicely if we can get a lift. Fine. You're, you're in charge. Stupid. Girl it is at this point that another figure gets up, and I have to ask Mr. Tolayup, do you have any siblings? Uh... No, but I have a wife and a husband. A wife and a husband. Interesting. Uh, what I would say then is your husband. It takes off the helmet and sort of shouts past, uh, Tolayup, is that you? Uh, uh, Arthur. My stars and garters. <laughs> and uh, Tolayup will get up from his station and head back there. Yep. Oh. How did you end up on the ship? You swore to me that you would never... Ah, the Borg. Well, yes, the Borg, in fact, that we are in different quantum anomaly. It's... Honestly, this feels like more your thing than mine, but hey, what do I know? Right, well, what happened to me in your reality? Um, well, let's just say you make very good drone, from what I hear. Oh, I would make good drone. I always thought I would look good with an ocular implant. Oh, then you would hate yourself. You actually don't have an implant. You actually have two. So it's kind of like oh. those stick things sticking out of your eyes. Oh, like the weird goggly things. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's very weird. That is, that is awful. Also, oh. you are um, you are five of eighteen, so you are not very oh. high ranking. No, that is disappointing. Well, also, uh, in this reality, I'm commander now. Oh, very, very good. Yes. Well, what happened to Katarina? Oh, well, Katarina, she couldn't take it. Very bad. Very bad. Oh, no. She always was sort of a depressor. Yes. And as this conversation continues, uh, so uh, to answer the questions in chat, because I'm just now seeing them, 
Um, yes, Raven can go ahead and get the duplicate runabout. They can tether that if you want. Um, Leob, uh, if you want to roll me a reason and a science, difficulty of one here. And this will be for your scanning the Borg nanovirus in the new arrivals, whether or not they have any or not. Difficulty of what, sorry? A difficulty of one. Okay, great. Uh huh. All right, two successes, which means you get one momentum. And uh, you can safely say that the Borg nanovirus is not present in any of your guests. Great. If it's not the mirror universe, it's a freaking Borg universe, and I just keep going at my console. Uh, Commander, uh, Commander General, I have, uh, General, I have a suggestion, perhaps. Let's hear it. If I know Ensign Loeb, and I think I do, he probably objects to giving the stowaways, as we'll call them from now, uh, any sort of technology or aid against the Borg. And to a certain extent, I think he is right to do so. However, what if we just gave them calling card of our friends in the fluidic space? Hmm. That's true. <laughs> do I hear this? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> fluidic space? Are you kidding me? We're already dealing with God knows how many mirror universes and you want to give them the calling card for fluidic space? They're not your dentist. <laughs> They're a species capable of annihilation. And he just sort of keeps babbling and like goes crazy. And yeah, he, he's sort of losing it a bit at the Ensign, preposterousness. Ensign Leop, may I have a word? Yes, of course. And I'll pull him into one of the side com side rooms and then close it. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the other commanding officers on the ship, Captain O'Connor, Commander Jaro, they'll put up with those kinds of outbursts at their suggestions. But one more time, you question my judgment in front of junior officers, and I will have you busted down to latrine duty for the rest of your time on the Matahari. Are we clear? <sighs> yes, Commander. That includes rolling your eyes. I did not get these commander pips by being a stupid. You're and right. if you aren't careful, you aren't ever going to get any more pips. You're right, commander. I'm sorry. That must have been one of my past hosts rolling their eyes, not me. Well, I suggest that you get control of your past hosts as quickly as possible and stop using them as an excuse or I will lodge formal complaint with Captain. Very well, Commander. All right, it. then. All right. Um, can I confirm whether or not giving, um, giving a way to contact Undine would be a... Um, a regulation violation or whether that's a loophole. Let me just put it this way. When people wrote the prime directive, they didn't exactly think, oh, gee, we have access to the Undine who can destroy planets with six ships. Let's think, do we want to give their number out to people? That's not going to come up. Let's not write a rule for that. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, I will um, go to the trio and just be like, um, Commander Taleb has come up with a pretty clever solution. We can get you in touch with a species that hates the Borg and can fight them. They might be your allies in this fight in a way that we can't be. Now, again, it's up to you whether you want to try that. And that would be a very admirable course or whether you want to come home with us. Carl, just so I make sure I'm saying her name right, is it Kaya, Katlana? Uh, Kayana. Kayana, okay. So Kayana, uh, of course, listens very intently to you, Jaro, nods along and says, well, um, I mean, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, ma gift horse in the mouth, but... Um, Let's just say, in the sake of clarity, we believe there to be a not 
really a ship, but some form of remnant of a species that we've been calling the Sculptors in this asteroid belt. What, uh, what, what kind of species? Well, we only know but so much, but from what we do know, they are a, well, as all extinct advanced races go, they were able to re warp reality to their will. And we're hoping, as I said earlier, that if we can get our hands on this technology, we could erase, erase the Borg from all quantum realities. Commander, I should we be telling them this? I listen, O'Connor. I I think it's important that we be just not. What's the word? Subversive. For all you look like an intelligent sort now. Is that is is that right? Yes, I would like to think so. Good, good. I like to see that I still have at least some intuition of my dead brother. Man, this is awkward. Uh, I. I understand what that this course of action is what your desperation has led you to and damn if I was in your position I don't know if if I'd be wanting to do anything different if I'm being honest but reality warping technology of that sort I mean Ensign Leo may be annoying but he he has a point there has to be align it which we're playing with with fire and i don't i don't know if i could permit you to uh to tamper with reality to, to that level that i mean something like that we'd be uncorking a bottle we wouldn't be able to reseal well if not your reality would you object to just ours I uh, will um, look over to Commander Tulayup, see what you think. Well, the Borg have played a fairly significant role in our reality in the course of the Federation's dealings with all the other species. I, I think while we may be able to object to them erasing the Borg from our reality, we couldn't stop them from erasing the Borg from their own, but... I caution that the universe doesn't work that way. And I think, for once, I agree with Edson Leo that any kind of tampering at that level will just increase your problems rather than... you. Sure, you might get rid of the Borg, but will you recognize the universe you create? Well, it has to be better than what the hell we came from. Think of it this way. You don't know what will fill the Borg's place. Maybe you're looking at a reality where the Dominion controls the entire galaxy. Maybe you're looking at a reality where Romulans have infiltrated every society. You Aren't don't know. those just Romulans? Excuse me? She has a point. Sorry, what? She said, aren't those just normal Romulans? <laughs> right. A joke. Awesome. Great. That's what we're doing now in the middle of talking about the fabric of reality. And I just walk away again. <laughs> so Frederick is going to pipe in mm -hmm. and he's upset. Oh. You'll, you have a, I can't do a ah, fucking accent. Lad, there it is. You didn't see the death tolls. You, you here in your fancy ship and your fancy universe. You didn't see my Maggie. You didn't see her get infected with those nanoprobes. <laughs> We're going to get that technology. We're going to kill these bastards in every universe. And he's like getting upset. I'm assuming like his officer like pulls him back. Yeah. As at this point, I think she sort of, put, you know, takes the sort of the two handed on the shoulder approach where she's like, O'Connor, O'Connor, breathe, breathe. They're not going to help us. No, they'll help us. You just have to not do outbursts like that. I'm angry. <laughs> so I, once again, uh, Commander Jaro just i i sort of go up to him and say very quietly like into his ear like look at the emotional state of these people do you really trust them with a reality altering device no i don't but i'm also not going to leave them 
completely empty handed here. Um, I'll, I want to call, I want to call all of our staff back, back to the front of the ship for, for, uh, um, for a meeting for, for a meeting. Yeah. Okay. So of course, uh, you do that sort of thing where you segregate the shuttle. The back half is for your guests. The front half is for you guys. And, uh, as, what I would say is that as everybody fills everybody else in, um, Raven actually speaks up and says, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. So if I understand this correctly, you're saying that they're here to get their hands on some sort of technology that they believe is in this asteroid field? Yep. Well, then we can't just leave them here. We have to see this technology destroyed. Uh... Wow, yeah, that's exactly what I was saying, Ensign. Kind of. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong, you look like shit, but you have good ideas sometimes. Uh-huh. This For raises... All, the layup, what do you think? This raises a thought. We're in the middle of how many quantum realities? Who's to say which reality this technology exists within? Or which reality will get a, their hands on it first? Plus, I'm not sure that we can trust them to be as discerning as they say they will be when you're racing the Borg. Unfortunately. I agree. You give somebody reality-altering technology, I don't think that they're going to stop at just one. Plus, what if they don't like the reality they get when they erase the Borg? Are they going to create a new Borg? Perhaps a Borg we don't understand. Oh, what is that human concept I was reading about? The butterfly effect? I'm not sure what a butterfly is, but... But they're I very think... pretty. They're like a floating piece of tissue. All right. I, I, okay. This is yeah. my proposed course of action. Ends in Raven and ends in Layoff are right. We need to find this technology and we need to destroy it. We also need to help these people get back to their home if that's what they really want. And I understand that this might not be within your understanding of the regulations on some layo, but I think that giving them contact with the Undine at least gives them a fighting chance in a way that they didn't have before. I mean, that being, oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. it's I. I've had nothing to say to that. It's your call, Commander. That being said, and in Raven, we're going to need to find out if we can even find this thing. Well, I've been thinking about that as we've been discussing this. If what I see on Leo's scans is correct, it gets harder to navigate the closer you get to the center of this asteroid field. And this is just an educated guess, but if I was a, I don't know, an ancient civilization, I'd park my secret reality warping station somewhere that people wouldn't be able to get to it very easily. Hmm. But you'd have to have a way in. Ensign, wait one. I'm going to see if I can find a safe track into the field to the center of the anomaly. All right. That is a very important role. Uh, I would say that, Leo, this is going to be an insight and a con. And the difficulty on this will be a five. One other person may assist you on this. The shuttle cannot help you. Um, then let's get... Uh, actually, I'm thinking maybe Raven, since we're plotting a course together, essentially. Okay. I could. I could also help with this. Yeah. Um, Do you have advisor? Con. Yeah. Okay. So then, yeah, maybe you have Jaro assist because his advisor will let you have a reroll. Okay, definitely. And what I would say is because you did t sort of mention the value earlier and you played to that strength, I will give you a point of determination. So you have two points of determination right now. Okay. 
And a quick reminder yeah. on uh, using determination as a as a game tool. Yeah, sure. So uh, there's two ways that are primarily used for determination. The first is that by applying a value to the current roll, you may start the roll with two free successes, or basically a dice that has already rolled a one. Or after the roll has been made, you can use determination to re-roll as many dice as you wish. Okay, well, I will use the determination to do the re-roll then. Okay. Um, I will use one there, and um, I will... Oh. Sorry, go ahead. We don't have any momentum, so... You do have one at the moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, so you should spend that. <laughs> okay. So I'll roll 3D, and then um, let me just look at my... Your focus uh, of quantum mechanics would apply here. Oh, yeah? Okay, great. Then I won't use my, one of my trill things for that. Um, so I'm rolling 3d20 on this uh, mm -hmm. with the focus and with possible re-rolls if anything should go awry. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's one success. Uh, Jaro, if you want to roll me a presence and a con, please, to assist him. All right. Sorry. Presence and con. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to re-roll two of those now. Uh, sure. Yeah. All right. That's one from me. All right. So I need to see at least one crit here. Unfortunately, that is four successes, not the five you need. So we sort of enter into the scenario where I can offer you a success at a cost. Uh, however, this cost will be rather high if you so wish to take it. Specifically, the cost is going to be, yeah, you find this, uh, you find this route into the center of the asteroid field, but let's just say you're not exactly being quiet with that information. Okay. Alternatively, could I spend my second point of determination now to get instant success? No, unfortunately, you okay. would have had to do it before the roll. Okay. Uh, Commander, it looks like we have something resembling a um, a course through the field, but it's not going to be pretty. It's uh, If anyone is looking at us, uh, they're going to know what we're doing. I think that this is too important and too dangerous to ignore. Um, I'll look over at the layup and prowl. I, I think we should go in. What do you think? I have a suggestion to make it safer, but I agree. I agree we need to go. What's the suggestion? Well, if we use the duplicate runabout as a, a wayfinder. So we increase its uh, its this, wow, well, I'm forgetting the name of the, the, the Well, it's actually one of those things that as Talayup maybe stumbles over his words, Raven says, um, Commander, you mean that runabout? And you look, and the other shuttle is moving away from you all at a rapid pace. Uh, yes, that one. Uh, if we could have used its uh, displacement shield. No, not displacement. What is the word? Deflector. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Ensign In Leo. the meantime, I'm already running a scan to figure out how that thing powered up. Well, it's actually very simple. Your guests are no longer on your shuttle. They're on theirs. Oh, that might be the case. Ah, uh, damn it. And they're taking the exact route that you just figured out. But uh, we've been going for about an hour and 10 minutes. So uh, let's take a 10-minute uh, break here. So Twitch YouTube, be back in about 10 minutes. Stick around.
All right, welcome back, everybody. If you're just tuning in, let's just say that the crew of the Matahari are facing sort of an ethical dilemma. They've encountered an alternate universe version of uh, people they know, and apparently these alternate people come from a universe where the Borg have almost taken over the entire galaxy, and that they have come to this dense asteroid field to seek out some ancient technology that apparently can warp reality at a whim. And where we just left off, uh, the crew of the Matahari had come to the decision that they needed to destroy this technology, whatever it is, and they had plotted a course through this dense asteroid field to get to it. However, before they could enact their plan, their quote-unquote guests have escaped to their own shuttle and are flying on that very same path that has been sussed out by Ensign Leob. So that's exactly where we resume. The other shuttle is zooming away from you guys. Uh, Ensign Raven's already diving for her seat. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? Ensign Raven, can we beat them to the uh, to the sculptor's device? Uh, do you want to be in one piece to get there? Or do you mind maybe losing the back half of the runabout? Captain, I suggest we just follow them in. That way, if they make some mistakes, we can correct using them as, uh, well, as uh, a template. The Whilst canary if, in the cave. Plus, if their deflector shield uh, moves the asteroids as much as I expect it will, we'll want to be in their wake. All right. Ensign Raven, stick close. On it, sir. On their ass. And uh, uh, I'll I need be scanning some... for uh, anomaly anomalies that may pop up as they come. Sure, command, command. I'm not sure if you want to just follow them in, but if we get close enough, I could probably talk at their engine and knock them out. Be prepared to do that. I command it. All right. So I need Ensign Raven to roll me a daring and a con difficulty of three, and the shuttle can assist with another eight or below. You can right. do it, Raven. Come on. I'll roll for the shuttle then. Bit by a Raven. All right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, shuttle. Come on, Raven. Who's got Raven, by the way? Oh. No one. I'm on I, it. I can do what it. What am I rolling? Uh, daring and... Con. Con. With a focus? Yep. Raven. Yeah. Interesting. Well, you needed three. You got two. Oh. <laughs> so I think off? what's going to happen is, sure, you guys get close, but what happens is as you get close, the other, uh, utter, the other shuttle is going to fire at you with its phasers. Yeah. So uh, let's just go ahead and do those rolls. Survey says... I believe that actually hits you. Yeah, that is enough. So the uh, it's it's not a very high powered phaser. It's enough to sort of shake the runabout. And if it matters, you guys lost one shield. You know what? Let me actually just make this a little bit easier. Uh, let me actually bring up the runabout token and just throw that onto this map. I think that would probably be a little bit easier. I love it. All right, so here's your runabout. Oh God, why is it why is it Ooh. crushed like that? Let's let's maybe not have a crushed yeah. runabout. Ooh, it was beautiful. I loved it. All right, so uh, this is going to be a standard power, uh, standard shield power bar controlled by all players. Your runabout. Ooh, pretty. And I do apologize for not having this set up ahead of time. I was not no sure worries. if I would need this. How dare you not be perfect, you beautiful GM. All right, so there is your runabout, and here is their runabout. So you're going to take uh, one damage to your shields, so you are down to three shields. And, minimal uh, damage. Minimal damage, command, that we lost just 20, 25% of our shields. We're fine. Radish. Take out their engines. I Commander. What do I roll? All right, so this is going to be a control security. Oh, yeah. Difficulty of three, but if you want to target their engines specifically, it becomes a okay. difficulty of four. And the shuttle okay. or prawl or jaro could assist you. Uh, what I would say is if it's prawl or, prawl or jaro, 
they're doing their own control security. If it's the shuttle, eight or below. Can this I, be a like a a direct a direct action where I could uh, use my presence command? You certainly can do it that way. Yeah. All right. I, I think I'll do it that way. So he's not going to target the he's not going to target the engines directly. He's just going to try to hit the shields, okay. knock it out. Okay. Then he'll target him. Like you know, maybe we'll get a little closer. He's trying okay. to be tactical. You know, he's he's a security guy. And okay. you'll get one reroll off of my presence in command. He will reroll that zero. I have the advisor Jersey. talent. Oh, All right, no. very important. Do you get that extra success? Hold on, just hold your horses. I'm doing it. Come on. Okay. All right, sweet Mother Mary. Ah, shoot. Yeah, so I think it's one of those things where you fire out with your own phasers and the streaks of orange light just go swizzing past uh, the other runabout. Uh, during their turn, they're not going to fire again, but they are attempt to speed or they're going to attempt to speed up, which, uh, as certain people have pointed out, could be a problem for you. Um, Brady's is going to look over at uh, Raven and be like, for God's sake, hold the thing steady. It, that, that, you're making it harder to hit. He That's blinked. not me. It's them. They're causing their wake, as you put it, is throwing everything out of whack. And what I would say is that their range actually increases. So before they were at medium range, they are now at long range, which means your phaser shot is plus one difficulty harder. However, you do have many torpedoes on a runabout. You could fire those torpedoes. Commander. Permission to fire torpedoes. I. <sighs> We're running I... out of time, Commander. I need an answer. Can I use um, <clears throat> or? I can't do it. Commander, maybe another option. Them. If we, if we fired a quantum torpedo at one of the anomalies as they were flying past it, it might be enough to knock them off track or at least knock it out their warp core. And Raven speaks up. Yeah, that'd be great. But we don't have quantums. We just have the mini sort of torpedoes that don't do much. Well, it might still be, it might, still, it might still be enough to cause a disruption commander. Commander. I, I, I think Vincent Leo is onto something. If we fire the torpedo ahead of them and then shot it with the, the phasers, we may be able to cause the, uh, the asteroids to shift enough that the course that we have we sussed out originally would no longer be viable. Bradish, if if Brawl fires the torpedo, would you hit it? Right. It has to be, the timing has to be right on. I used to bullseye womp wraps in my T60. Yeah, I can do it. All right. All right. Well, I I'm going to start scanning to find an ideal uh, anomaly they'll be clo they'll be flying close by to. Gotcha. So we again have multiple venues of assist here. Um so first I need to know is it Bradish uh doing the main role or is it Prawl firing the torpedo that's the main role? I was thinking that it'd be me finding the the mm. anomaly. Like oh, the... I see what you're saying. I see what your yeah. mindset is. So yeah, okay. let's do it actually as a linear task then. So first we'll do Leob. Uh, Leob, you're doing a reason science, uh, difficulty of two, assisted by the shuttle, okay. to find that anomaly. Uh, it is a quantum mechanics type deal, so your focus does apply. Love our teamwork today. It's beautiful. All right. Good job, everybody. Mm. So unfortunately, nothing on the ship. But... Oh, but okay. Nice. But that's important. That's three successes. So you do get one momentum. And yes, you find the perfect singularity ahead of them that you could use for this purpose. That uh, one. That one right there. I'm 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 sending it to your console now. All right. So Prawl, very important role. You are rolling a control and a security difficulty of three, and uh, the ship will again assist you with its eight or below. Would uh, improvisation be an applicable focus to this? I'll give it to you. Oh dear, that's a complication from the shuttle. No. Uh, yay! Do I want to go ahead and use that momentum for this? I think so, yeah. yeah. 
Let's go no. ahead and do that. Let it happen. And you get four successes, so you actually get that momentum right back. So I have good news and I have bad news. Which would you like? <laughs> yes. Let's go with the bad first. All right, bad news. So when you fire the torpedo, it does go past their runabout, but it actually is scraping by too closely to one of the asteroids. So the torpedo navigation has to sort of do sort of that lurch to the side and it loses the initial track. So unfortunately, you do not have the benefit that Leo got you just now, whereas you're just blowing up a torpedo in their path now. You're not actually blowing up a singularity or a quantum tear, unfortunately. Now, Bradish, if you still want to shoot the torpedo, uh, that is going to be a control security difficulty of three. And again, the shuttle can assist eight or below. Well, no one's told me otherwise, so he's going to fire. Yep. Do you want to use the momentum? Eh, let's save it. I'm not as okay. concerned about this right now. Unless anyone else protests. Let's save it. No. Let's save it. Okay, I like that. Okay, and skadoosh. Hey, one, All right, there's one. two. Oh, uh, so close. So quite. I think what happens is you fire out with your phasers again, and they're just not properly aligned because they go completely off course. However, because of the way you set up the torpedo, the torpedo continues onward and just slams into a rock in a, ineffectually and detonates without harming the other runabout. <sighs> Commander suggests we hail them, let them know that what they're doing isn't really working. It seems to me like what we're doing isn't really working. <laughs> See, I, don't I didn't think say we were telling to... the truth, Commander. <laughs> uh, I don't think that they're going to answer after being fired upon. Yeah. Be fair I, I think we first. need to just continue to, to, to see if we can close the distance. All right. So it is going to be their turn, and I tell you what, I'm going to be spending a grand total of three threat to give them two additional dice. Let's go. Because they are going to see that torpedo and answer with one of their own. Ah, you sly devils. And that is more than enough to hit you. So here's what I'm going to do, because I already have a feeling how this roll is going to work. The roll for a torpedo on a runabout is three challenge dice, if I remember correctly. Which means there is the potential here to not destroy your runabout, but definitely knock it out of commission. Hey, so, uh, an anomaly full of uh, quantum tears. That sounds like a good place for that to happen. Oh, yeah. So, what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to look to chat on this one. Oh, Chat, boy. if huh. any of you are still available at your keyboards, I need you to pick a number between 1 and 20 for me. I figured we'd involve chat so it's not just me killing you. Oh, no. <sighs> Anybody? Help us out. Oh, boy. I'll give them a, about 30 seconds more, and if they haven't replied, I'll... Pick one of them Nobody now. wants to be complicit in our death. I think. <laughs> we, we appreciate that. Like, we appreciate yeah. that. All right. Well, uh, unless one comes in, all right. I'm just going to pick it on my own then. So uh, I'm going to pick a secret number, and I'm going to roll those three challenge dice. All right. That's more or less what I was effect uh, expecting. So. The number in question was whether or not I would be rolling any re-rolls for damage. And unfortunately, the number I picked means I'm going to be spending a threat to re-roll that zero. <laughs> which does mean oh. that your shields go down, which means your runabout suffers a breach. So let's see what kind of breach you guys have. Computers. Well, that's just even better. <laughs> so... All of your consoles, all of your displays flicker and die out as the the runabout's still going, but you're on manual now, as in like Tom Paris Delta Flyer manual. Looks like we're putting those pilot skills to the test, Raven. Yeah, yeah. I, I someone pull the clutch. Is someone pulling the clutch? <laughs> <laughs> On it, Jensen. 
But it is uh, your guys' turn again. At this point, uh, what I would say is that you guys are really having a rough time of it. What would you guys like to do? As chief engineer, I repair the breach. It's, it's the thing that I can do. It is indeed combat. something you can do. Uh, I believe, since you're doing it yourself, that's going to be either a control or a daring plus engineering at a difficulty of two. I'd like to assist on that. Sure. Commander, I'll I'll I'll, I'll take the console over here. Uh, so you, it, control and engineering is okay, or you yeah, want control daring? engineering is fine. I have computers as a focus. And that yeah, that would apply. Um, I'm going to uh, pull on my uh, Trill past life of Ilana, uh, who was a Starfleet officer. She knows her way. She knew her way around a uh, a, a, a computer or two for uh, computers as a focus this mission. Okay. Well, Taleop has gotten two. Leo, you get a one. So uh, that's three successes total. You are able to repair the breach, so the consoles all flicker back to life, and you're no longer flying on manual. Nice work. Was that our turn? That is going to be your turn, unless Prawl wants to use his quick to action. I don't oh, have, I quick, have action. quick to action. Oh, actually, oh yeah. Star, I always get the mixed up yeah, which one yeah, of you yeah. has it. So yeah, so, you could use quick to action if you wanted. Yeah, I'm going to use quick to action to immediately take back the turn. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, and we're there a uh, torpedo burst right, right into the enemy ship. Okay. So this is going to be extremely difficult because you've already all fired your weapons. You've already used your direct. So we're looking at a difficulty of five. So whoever rolls, you're doing a control security difficulty of five. At this point, I think it has to be the shuttle that assists you. So if you want to take back that idea, you certainly can. But that is what it would, it would take to fire again. I, I, do, I, will I don't believe I've taken my turn that. in the combat yet. Right, but because the runabout only has one tactical station, you would yeah. have to override another, which increases the difficulty again. So that's where the five is coming from. Well, I, okay, Commander, I, I have an idea. Instead of firing again, why don't we just use reverse the polarity on the tractor beam to knock them off course so that they have to dodge some asteroids or singularities? That should slow them down. Uh, I think tractor beam is still a tactical task, isn't it? It's still a tactical it action, is. unfortunately. Ensign. Uh, what do you think about intent, uh, using the... If, what if we actuate our nano-ionic distortion array and aim it at their deflector, causing it to uh, extend further ahead of their ship than would they expect? We'll just change its polarity, causing the asteroids to uh, change faster than the, the hopefully their pilot can compensate for. At the very least, that'll take them off of the correct tracking on their navigation. Yeah, let's try it. Let's do it. All, All right. right. If you think this will work. Hey, and uh, no guarantees, Commander. Uh... All right. So, Leo, very important role here. I need you to roll me a daring and a science difficulty of three. I will assist. You may assist with your daring and engineering. Um. So we have two momentum. Also, it might be worth someone spending determination at this point because we are. You know what? I'll spend the determination on this. Okay. Get, Get the... two three successes to start with. So daring and science. Daring and science. For two die. I don't I think I've got a success a... already. I don't think I've got a focus on this. Uh, so unless subspace field theory works for this. Could I could I could see it applying. All right. All right. So that All is right. a grand total of five successes. So yeah, you more or less use your deflector to mess with their deflector. And although we don't really see anything from sort of a, a third person view, um, what begins to happen with their runabout is more and more asteroids begin to ping off of their hull, off of their shields. And Leo, since this was your task, I'd like you to roll me uh, two challenge dice, please, to represent the damage done to them. Sweet. All right. So you're going to do one damage to their shield. Wonderful. 
which hey that's still 25 percent Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, however, uh, what is going to happen now is I am going to spend all of my threat <laughs> to immediately end the scene because what's going to happen is they are going to increase speed to the point that even with Raven's piloting skills, you quickly lose sight of the enemy runabout and eventually she has to bring your runabout to a stop as the path that you had scanned out is no longer viable. And she kind of just sort of looks at everyone and says, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm I, a great pilot, but I can only do so much. Not your fault, Edson. Not I'm going to start fault, trying yeah. to find a different path through the field, see um, see if there's something that uh, that we missed, or maybe the change in the asteroids might have opened up a new path. Gotcha, gotcha. So this is where I'm going to actually ask the players. Uh, we're looking at probably another two hours of playtime here. Um, so would you guys be okay with ending this on a cliffhanger and yeah, picking this up in two weeks? Mm -hmm. okay. Love me a good cliffhanger. All right. Then our cliffhanger is just sort of everybody looking at their stations, wondering what to do as uh, the camera pans back. And that is where we will end today's session. Uh, obviously, don't go run reading the adventure. But what are you thinking of the adventure so far? Fantastic, really good. very good, yeah. Yeah. good, really good moral dilemmas. Like, yeah, it's, it's good, really good. Excellent, yeah. cool. All right, well, with that, this is where I'm going to end the stream. So, Twitch and YouTube, thank you so much, and uh, see you later. <laughs>